Now, uh, this is going to be, I think, moo, I don't remember. It's part of the fire series. <clears throat> I'll have to look up which one it is. I think it's part four, I believe. Could be five, I'm not sure. But this is going to be a little different. Instead of fire being a bad thing for the wicked and the unbelievers, this is going to be fire as a good thing for believers. Now, please remember something. The flood of Noah was salvation to his family about from the, uh, the giants in Genesis 6. And God put up the bow, the rainbow, in the clouds as a sign that he would never, ever destroy the earth with water ever again. And we find that in Genesis chapter 9. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. What does perpetual mean forever? And I do set my bow in the cloud, a rainbow, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Okay, that uh, doesn't mean we're not going to have localized floods, of course. But he's talking about a flood to kill all flesh. No, it's not going to be water. Next, next time it's going to be fire. So, and what does fire do? It cleanses, it disinfects, it kills off all the bad things. So, just remember, the flood of Noah was salvation for his family. Now, in Matthew 24, starting in verse 37, But as the days of Noe were, that's the Greek rendering of Noah, but as the days of Noah were, Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who did the, the flood took who away? The wicked. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come, but know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. All right, in verse 39, it says, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who was taken away? The wicked. So when they're talking about two are going to be in the field, one's going to be taken and the other left, uh, you know, they always use this as a pre-trib rapture proof verse. Oh yeah, two are going to be in the field. One's going to be taken and the other left. Yeah, but at the end of the flood of Noah, who was taken and who was left? The wicked were taken and Noah was left behind which is the, exactly the opposite of what pre-trip rapture people teach. I want to be left behind, people. I don't want to be taken like the, the, the wicked in the flood. 
but uh, next time it's going to be fire. All right, so let's take a look in the Bible. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 3. Let's take a look at Daniel chapter 3. We're going to read, start at verse 1. Now remember, Nebuchadnezzar, now if you've never read the book of Daniel, uh, I don't want to make this a huge Bible study. I mean, the entire book of Daniel is worth, well worth reading. Daniel had a dream. I'm sorry, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that Daniel had to interpret because nobody else could do it. And he saw this image of a man with a head of gold and a breast of iron. I mean, I'm sorry, silver. And then uh, I think the thighs were brass. And then the feet were uh, part iron and part clay. And Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar that the head of gold was him, Babylon. So, what happens? Well... Nebuchadnezzar, he got a big, big head, decided, I'm going to make a statue of gold that represents me. So let's read. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. You know what? Maybe we should read Daniel chapter 2. Let's go to Daniel chapter 2. Turn the page. Verse 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep brake from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. In other words, ah, I've forgotten. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. A dunghill. If you don't know what a dunghill is, um, well, let's just say if you're in a cow field, uh, when the cows do number two, that's, yeah. Uh, they're going to pile that on their house. Verse 6. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I will know. Tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. Oh, yeah. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Oh, yes, there is. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asketh such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth. And there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy, commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree, decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, 
Why is the de uh, decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in a desire of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellow servants should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Remember that, people. God removes kings and he sets up kings. Why was Joseph Stalin and Hitler in power? Because God set them up and God removed them. He took them down. Why did we have Obama for a president? God sets them up. God takes them away. Why is Donald Trump in office? Because God wants him there. And believe me, I uh, was no fan of Hillary, nor her husband, but uh, I am not a big fan of Donald either. Um, but like I say at work, I hate all politicians. Well, let's just say that 99% of the politicians give the 1% a bad name. That What can I tell you? And he, God, and he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hath given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went in and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, say, show unto the king? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. You see, people, latter days means the last days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to me what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes, that shall, be, that shall make known the interpretation of the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, the breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron, and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. 
Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. And we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom, inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron breaketh, all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, and there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part iron and part clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Forasmuch as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation, sure. Now, what is the stone that's going to uh, destroy the image? Well, the interpretation of that is in 1 Peter chapter 2. Matter of fact, we read that, uh, verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Now, it's obviously talking about Christ. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is, become, is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. In 1 Corinthians, Paul is talking to the Greeks in Corinth, a Greek city. In Greece, listen to what he says. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. See, he's telling the Greek Corinthians that they were baptized with Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Huh. Verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. See, people, that rock that smotes the image, that takes over, that's going to be Christ in his kingdom. So, uh, let's see. Let's go back to Daniel 3. Verse 44, 
And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these ki kingdoms, and it, should, it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made note of the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors, odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal the secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. All right, let's take a look. Now we're going to do verse uh, number, let's see, number three, Daniel chapter three. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. Now, here it is. He's getting lifted up with pride because he had that dream. How, how much time had passed? I don't know. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Uh, that's modern day Iraq people. The Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship, worship, the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. Ooh, so... So here it is, Nebuchadnezzar sets up this image in his honor and wants everybody to fall down and worship it. Isn't that idolatry? Isn't that in the Ten Commandments not to do it? Yeah. So what's he going to do if those that refuse to do it? Well, verse 6. And whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So you're either going to fall down and worship this image or you're going to be thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard that the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations and languages, fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Now, these are... These are the real Hebrews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worship, worshipeth, that he shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. But Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? 
Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God? And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Well, guess what? He's getting ready to find out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it want to be heated. Oh yeah, let's, let's make this thing seven times hotter. All right, so... And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So here is the, the mighty men that bound these guys they were killed by the fire they were killed nebuchadnezzar's servants were killed and these three men shadrach meshach and abednego fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace the nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire they answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Wait, wait a minute. We, we put three people in the fire. I see four. That's the Bob translation. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth, fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak Anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces in their houses, shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. You see, people, sometimes fire is a good thing. Now, if you think Nebuchadnezzar was just some evil, rotten, heathen heretic, read Daniel chapter 4. Guess who wrote Daniel chapter 4? He did. Nebuchadnezzar did. I suspect he was saved. I really do. I mean, it's accepted as scripture. He must have wrote it under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So, 
All right, well, we're going to continue with uh, fire, a good thing, uh, probably tomorrow, hopefully, God willing. This is Chaplain Bob uh, signing off. All blessings, praise, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is Christ, in his precious name. Amen.